Hey guys, it's Peter Jordan with Lost Angler, and today we're going to talk about the LT25 Raptor from Custom Guinea. We're going to go over the features, how this particular boat is set up, to see if it's the right boat for you. So starting out, let's go over what makes the LT25 Raptor a Raptor. It's actually this, it's the aluminum center console. On most boats, you have a standard center console. And what I mean by that, that's kind of your fiberglass center console. You see it on a lot of your bay boats, a lot of your flats boats, a lot of your skiffs. Well, Custom Guinea kind of looked at it from a different point of view, and I really like what they've done. What they've done is they've brought that console up, giving you all the room you need to mount accessories, but maximize the amount of space you have on a small boat like this. So, we're going to get to this console here in a second. We're going to give you a quick uh, run through of the way this particular boat is set up and why we set it up this way. Just remember, Custom Guinea really is a custom boat builder. So if you can dream it, they can come up with it. So hang tight, we're going to go through this boat. Okay guys, so from right up here at the bow, we have what we call the trolling motor wedge mount. So instead of having like your ordinary trolling motor mount, it'll stick off to the side so you can run a transom style trolling motor. This is set up so that you can run an iPilot, and there's a ton of advantage to the iPilot. You can check out tons of different videos explaining all the reasons why it's really cool. As a dad, I really like it because it lets me be part of the fishing. I'm not up here messing around. I can control it from the helm, I can control it from the platform, whatever you want to do. So when you've got small people fishing or you're taking friends fishing and you want to be more of a part of that, not just the trolling motor guy, and iPod's great, but we're not really going to get into that stuff. So it's already set up your quick connect bracket. When you order it from Custom Guinea with this setup, it's going to come with the bracket that you'll need for your trolling motor. So that's really, really nice they took care of that for you. It's already set up with the trolling motor plug right here. So it's already been wired for a trolling motor. Now one thing we did with this one is I wanted to bring the weight of the trolling motor battery forward. Now, I also want to emphasize something else. Your trolling motor battery on this boat is also your cranking battery. And for a lot of people, you're going, oh no, that's, that's, you could run down the trolling motor and it could kill your ability to crank about, you know, crank your motor. And in most boats, that's true. But with the custom Ginu, the 25 horse Tahatsu is also a pull start and it's really easy to pull start on that boat. Now, that being said, here's an advantage. Every time I run my outboard, it's charging my trolling motor battery. So. You charge your battery the night before like you should. Every time before you go out, you'll never have an issue. Trust me. I've got way more hours on my trolling motor than I do my outboard. So this is, you know, definitely the way to go. So let's open it up. So from right up here, we have our battery. And then we have also the breaker. So we can keep that on and off. We flip the breaker. It's easy to get to. I like using this for your little things of storage. Like you're going to need your fire extinguisher, your flare kit, your first aid kit. Uh, you want to always keep that kind of stuff away from your outboard, and this is a great little spot for it. So you can leave this open. You can put your trolling motor battery in the back. I like bringing it up here because it's a constant weight. Like if you put your fuel forward, which is a cool thing you can do as you go throughout the day, that weight changes up here. It's constant. And also, too, um, I would... Uh, I would hazard to say over the course of the entire day, this is going to end up being a lot more weight. So Now... Moving on. Next up, we have our live well. We have a large live well right up in here. What I'm gonna do in just a second, I'm gonna show you how this one is set up, so hang tight. Okay guys, so we're gonna take a look at the forward live well on this boat. The forward live well on this boat is actually really, really big. What you're not seeing is it goes on up there. So plenty of room if you wanna fish for tournaments, you wanna put some redfish in there, you're good to go. You can control the amount of water coming in and out from the pet cock from right here. This hose runs all the way to the back of the boat and is going to give you a nice clean setup for your uh, live well pump. Now, this is your stand pipe. This just slips right on top. No big deal. The water, I thought this was a really cool, very ingenious idea from Custom Guinea, is that the water actually goes directly through the bottom of the boat. So you don't ever have to worry about it getting in like filling up and having to go out a pipe somewhere or going down to your bilge, which is much more dangerous on a small boat. So I thought that was a really good idea. If you decide not to use it, turgor pressure is gonna keep this little flat pushed up, the water pressure is gonna keep it. But you can also get the kit, and what it does is it's basically the same thing except it's capped. So you put it on in there, good to go, really good. So 
a lot of good options right there. I like this setup. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this, but around this channel right here, when you're running water across your boat, water's gonna set down and it's gonna go through here. And this is all the way around all of your compartments on your uh, custom Guinea boats. They are an extremely dry hatch setup. If you're in just a downpour, and it is just nasty, or you take some, you 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 just take a big wave or something, dude. Your stuff is gonna stay dry. Custom Guinea really thought this out. This is a really really dry compartment setup, and I'm really proud of it. We're gonna come around to the front real quick, and I'm gonna show you how it drains. Okay, so when we've got water coming down, like you're hosing off your boat, or it's raining, or you get just whatever happens, as the water comes down, it's gonna flow around this gutter system, and it's actually piped all the way through. So the water travels all the way down on both sides. I really love that about it. on both sides. Let's kind of come out off these clamshells right here. So it drains out into the deck, down to the bilge, good shape. This is an extremely dry setup. Uh, I fished with a good friend of mine the other day. Uh, we were night fishing and we went through downpour after downpour after downpour after downpour and all the gear we had in our custom Guinea compartment stayed bone dry. So I really, really want to point that out. That is really nice. Really, really nice. Okay, so we're here at the infamous Raptor Helm. I love this. From a standing position, everything is very comfortable for me. We did upgrade this to go with the uh, helm with the control knob and I like that whenever I'm running any sort of boat center console because this allows me to keep constant control on the helm without having to turn my hands or do whatever. I think it's a must. We did the black powder coating on it because it looks absolutely sick and the powder coating doesn't get hot during the summer so we're not ah, burning our hands. Now I've got a ton of room where I can mount up to a nine inch screen and what you want to remember is I've got to come forward here so as long as I can uh, progress my helm all the way up I've got all this room. And you can also add uh, ram mounts, make it as big as you want to. I personally am, as always, a fan of the seven inch unit on this boat. I feel like it's more than enough. Now, coming on back. We set it up so that your cushion is here. You have the option to put it here or to put it here. A lot of folks that run a stick steering setup, they'll run it from right here so they can lean back. But for this boat, it really didn't make sense to put it here, so we brought it on down. So what it did was it gave us that perfect little setup. So now I've got my feet right here. I'm really comfortable and I'm leaning forward enjoying my boat. Now you also have tilt helm so you can get it just perfect for where you want it. We're about to come around and take a look at the helm setup. Before we do that let's actually take a look at this. This is actually set up right here with your cup holder. You've also got a rod holder. It's right here easy to get in hand and you've also got a backrest. You might be saying hey man why do I need a backrest? There's no seat here. I'll show you. We'll get to that in just one moment. Now, I love how this tilts up. Now I've got a glove box that I can access. I can keep little valuables in here, but I've also got really good access to everything. Um, notice how cleanly it's all wired up. You don't have a jumble of wires in here. Everything's cleanly set up. I love Custom Guinea's attention to detail. These, this is a, a, a family business, and you can tell that they really, really care. Boom. As promised, we're here at the helm. And what I really like about it, I've got my kill switch here, ignition switch here. I've got, obviously, my binnacle here. Now, you've got a spare set right here. So if you want to add a flood light like we've done on other boats, or you want to add just anything else in the world, you're good to go. You have a 12-volt plug-in right here. So if you want to get one of those little car adapters that lets you charge your cell phone on the roll, you can do that too. Anchor lights are here. Bam. Nav lights are here bilge pump is here. We set up all of our boats with an automatic bilge pump. I suggest that everybody do that. That is, it's a no-brainer, man. That's just, it's just great safety in a small boat like this. And then your aerator for the Ford. Everything's really easy to get to. Everything's easy to see. You have tilt at the helm, so you can get it perfectly set up for you. Really nice, clean setup. So, let's take a look at seating options now. Okay guys, so this is an Engel dry box slash cooler 30 quart that we run on the old man's tiller boat. We'll do a video on the tiller boat later. Um, now this obviously will work really well. We set this up with a canoe back setup right here to give that additional lumbar setup. 
hop in the boat, show you what I mean. I can very comfortably spin an entire day on the water just like this. This is really, really comfortable. This is really nice. Nicest spot on the boat, obviously. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now, if I want more space, if I want more room for my cooler, one thing I really suggest doing, and I think this is a really good way to do if you're a hardcore fish guy or gal, is to run a Yeti 45 or Arctic 45 or Engel, whatever size cooler you want to, and they make a really nice cushion for it. And because this is actually a really comfortable setup right here. So if I'm sitting back relaxing, I've got ample space. Now, we're gonna look at something. So I want you to notice to be comfortable. I've got a large gap in space because if I went any further back, you just you really can't enjoy this space. But if I run a Yeti 45 or a 45 quart cooler and I put a cushion on it, I'm actually gonna suggest taking it, running it sideways. The reason I want to run it sideways is now I can go all the way from here to here, which is really comfortable. And when I want to access it, lift this up, open my hatch, good to go. It gives me a Big cooler space, a lot of dry storage, and a lot of room, and I can run my cooler chocks either which way. So, big fan run the big cooler up here. In the back, I do prefer the smaller cooler, and we're going to look at the way I like to set that up here. Set up right here is with the foam boxes, okay? Now, you do have an option from Custom Guinea where you can run your gas tank, and you can also go ahead and put in another storage compartment right here. You can use it as a live well, you can use it as whatever you want to. Again, I'm going to go back to the fact that I'm a cooler nut. So here's what I like to do. Boom. Ingle goes in right there. Looking lovely. Another thing I like is I can color match that out to whatever I want to. Just remember you're gonna be able to mount your chalks here on the side so you can strap your cooler in real nice. And I like the fact that you can color match this. So when I'm coming, when I'm in the boat, I can very comfortably stand up. I can lean back and I got a nice cooler that I can bring in and out. It's really nice setup. Or if I want to sit up, this is kind of one of my things that I really like. I can take this, slide it up forward, and I got a nice place to put my feet when I'm running the boat. So I really like that about it as well. Now, that being said, you can run a little roadie cooler like Yeti makes. You can do the dry box slash cooler from right here. You're really limited by your imagination. So being a really cool technical poling skip, something that a lot of people struggle with when they first get into a new poling skip is actually getting on the polling platform. And I can understand because you're taking yourself outside of your center of gravity, you're taking yourself out of your comfort zone. If you've been doing it a long time like I have, it's an old hat. It's not a big deal. It's not something to be worried about. But with the Raptor setup, it's also a seat is now a step. So. I'm right here, running my boat. Now it's time to get up to the polling platform. Bam, bam, bam. That is easy. That is extremely easy. I'm up here, I'm comfortable, good to go. Now, I want to point out something that I think is really nice as well. If I'm new to polling a skip, if I'm not used to having that center of gravity way up high, you can pull that skiff really easy from right up here. That's so much easier. As you're getting more comfortable with what you're doing, as you're getting used to this new style of fishing, this is something that's really nice. It's really easy. It's really comfortable. I can also stand up from right here and pull a skiff if it's really windy or rough. Notice that now I've got my legs up against here. This is a really nice setup. It makes a lot of sense. So now, good to go. So right underneath here, I've got ample room to mount a tea bag, and I'm going to kind of show you guys real quick another boat that has a tea bag, so you get a rough idea how we're going to do that. So it's going to mount right underneath here, giving me even more storage. So now, I've got in the bow, rocking out. I've got area for uh, my Coast Guard equipment up there. I've got my live well, which can also serve as storage. I've got a cooler right in front of the console, still storage. Another cooler right here, even more storage. Easy access to my systems as far as my fuel, my pumps, everything really easy to get to then I can add a, a tea bag right here so when people say hey man this is a small boat it doesn't have a whole lot of storage it really does 
if you set it up right, this thing has a tremendous amount of storage. Uh, just ridiculous. I even forgot about the glove box over there. You've got all the room you want and more. That's Tiller Boat. By that, I mean this is my dad's boat. It was really, really, again, I know I've talked about this before in different social media posts. It was really something special to get to set this boat up for my dad. Um, so, you know, hopefully he gets a lot of years out of using it. And occasionally, we get to run it too, which is really nice. You can generally always see it here at the store. Uh, Dad lets me uh, put together a lot of cool stuff, like electronics features and all that. So it gets to be kind of an experimental thing where we can try out new features. So Dad's been really nice about that. So big thumbs up. Thanks, Dad. All right, now, bam, right in here, tea bag. This is set up a particular way. We're going to do a full video on how I set it up uh, and so that you can do it yourself later on. So the tea bag is right in here. Goes underneath that. I can put whatever I want to in there. I can put my throwable in here, my PFDs in here. I've got a ton of room. This gives me another humongous amount of storage space on your boat. Not too bad, huh? So this Raptor is set up with a Tahatsu 25 horse, four stroke outboard motor. If you're wondering to yourself, uh, is this enough boat, excuse me, is this enough motor for this boat? Dude, it's way more than enough. Uh, this is gonna push two grown adults 30 miles an hour and they are unbelievably dependable, ridiculously quiet, and they have a ton of low-end torque. I could not be happier with these Tahatsu outboards. And they're ridiculously dependable. Everything you would normally expect from a Japanese outboard, this one, they, they're amazing. Huge fan. Guys, I hope this helped answer any questions you might have about the custom Ginu Low Tide 25 Raptor, the aluminum center console setup, ways you can set up the boat ways you can equip the boat, why it's equipped the way we particularly equipped this boat. So, if you have any questions, feel free to stop by the store at Daphne, uh, reach out via email, message me. Happy to answer any questions you've got. Even if you don't buy from us here at Delta, we want to make sure that you are happy with the boat you get. So, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and uh, we'll see you on the water.